And with us today is a man that has had this infection, has overcome it. He's a famous movie star. He's a famous uh, singer. And it's a pleasure to welcome him to our show, Mr. Randy Travis. Thank Thanks. you for coming in. Thanks, Dr. Doherty. I, I, uh, that's a nice intro. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. My pleasure. I, uh, yeah, I did deal with, obviously, uh, the Lyme disease. But I'll back up before that, which you and I had a phone conversation before I ever came out That's here. That's right. I remember that out. conversation. And you had called me and said that something had happened to your voice. Mm -hmm. And I understand for a singer, that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, that's not the best thing to have happen. You know what would happen to me back then, as I told you. I'd, I would sing a, a, a show. I mean, I came out of starting singing at eight, eight years old, by 14 working in clubs, by 16 singing five, six nights a week. So uh, I'd never had a problem. Right. So all at once, I found myself singing a night, and maybe the next night I would go to for words or sometimes for a whole line. Nothing would come out. There would be nothing there. And uh, a little bit scary, a little bit scary. And it became harder and harder in the studio to get vocals done. And then uh, I saw you doing a, a, a television show. I was listening to you that, that uh, afternoon. And you were talking about alternative medicines. And, and, and not just because I knew a lot about alternative medicines or or that I knew that's where I wanted to go. But I was listening to you, it made a lot of sense, and I had already gone through uh, three other uh, medical doctors right. and used, well, like everybody else who's ever struggled with that, I've used everything over the counter you could find and every nasal spray you could possibly was it find. Wasn't working. Yeah, nothing's working. Yeah. Um, and you know that conversation we had. I knew that the uh, clinic I was going to send you to. If anybody could find the problem, they probably could because mm -hmm. they had saved my health some 20 years earlier uh, by finding poisonous amounts of mercury vapor coming off of my fillings, which had suppressed my immune system. And I got well the moment uh, I had these uh, fillings removed. But if it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be here today. Yeah, and I remember hearing you say that on that interview. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I came out and uh, and, and, and it's funny, looking back at it, it's funny. A friend of mine, Charles Bishop, he and I both had all these allergies going on. And uh, we both had the Lyme disease, which we'll discuss in a minute. But uh, I do remember this after getting the test results back, you know. Uh, the doctor, doctor looks at Charles and I, my wife, however, nothing, very few allergies at all, but uh, looked at Charles and I and said, you know, you two are allergic to pretty much every grass and tree known to man. <laughs> wow. Well, that's not good, is it? No. Especially since I grew up in the country, and that's where I like to be most of the time. Right. And then on top of that, as you were talking about earlier, the thing that we found that I had really no knowledge of at that time was the Lyme disease. Right. Uh, usually from finding out as time goes by, coming from uh, ticks uh, which have been infected by deers. Okay. And, uh, you know, I grew up, as I say, way out in the country there in North Carolina. And it, uh, let's face it, some days there was nothing to pull six, eight, if not more, ticks off of you when you're a kid and you're out in the woods playing. My gosh, that's amazing. And even today, they feel that uh, other insects can vector this disease, not just the tick. But yeah, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, uh, gnats. Uh, some gnats researchers too. believe that uh, these particular insects are also involved. Uh, uh, one of the things about this disease, this uh, bacteria that causes Lyme, is that you know it does have a preference for nerve tissue, mm -hmm. uh, the brain, the uh, spinal cord, but it can infect any tissue of the human body, and it can mimic the symptoms of almost any so they make it as easy as, easy as possible right. they, they really help you out a lot there and after having gone through three other doctors now think about that three other doctors and using the medications they gave me uh, with no success uh, as far as allergies go in just a little over a month just a little over 30 days this all started to come under control and singing started coming back to Normally, it was not a hundred percent, but started coming back within about a thirty right, day period right. and then, of course, uh, the other thing we 're talking about the Lyme disease that also had to be addressed and um, you know i 've read some studies uh, as you have 
where I've, I've read where people have been on antibiotics for five years That's and right. still have terrible symptoms of Lyme. Um, uh, I, within about a six-week period, had this down to, let's face it, it's, it's, it, you can take antibiotics. Uh, this is what the studies show at this point. You can take antibiotics till you die. You're never going to get rid of it. It is going to be in your system. So your immune system has to stay strong, and therefore you keep that at bay or under control. So in about a uh, six-week period of time, that in itself was under control. But I have met and talked with people in person because I've been going in and out. Sometimes, let's face it, if we're touring and we're close by, we come by and visit just because they're friends. Mm -hmm. I mean, the folks are friends of ours. And uh, I've met a lot of people with many kinds of disease. I watched a person who had been in a wheelchair for 46 years able to get up and walk. That's, My that sounds like a miracle. It really does. And right.